أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الزاني لا ينكح إلا زانية أو مشركة والزانية لا ينكحها إلا زان أو مشرك وحرم ذلك على المؤمنين والذين يرمون المحصنات ثم لم يأتوا بأربعة شهداء فاجلدوهم ثمانين جلدة ولا تقبلوا لهم شهادة أبدا وأولئك هم الفاسقون إلا الذين تابوا من بعد ذلك وأصلحوا فإن الله غفور رحيم والذين يرمون أزواجهم ولم يكن لهم شهداء إلا أنفسهم فشهادة أحدهم أربع شهادات بالله إنه لمن الصادقين والخامسة أن لعنة الله عليه إن كان من الكاذبين ويدرأ عنها العذاب أن تشهد أربع شهادات بالله إنه لمن الكاذبين والخامسة أن غضب الله عليها إن كان من الصادقين ولولا فضل الله عليكم ورحمته وأن الله تواب رحيم صدق الله العظيم These are the beginning ayahs of Surah An-Nur we talked about the first two ayahs in our previous sessions. In the second ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned the punishment for those who would commit adultery. And we talked about the reason and the wisdom behind these punishments that Islam has set. And we also talked about the importance of applying these rules in order to protect the society from all kinds of corruption. Keeping in mind that on one hand, we need to protect the chastity, the dignity, the honor of every person and every woman should feel safe in the society. But at the same time, on the other hand, we don't want to open the door of false accusations. That anyone would just blame a person for these type of things and get that, that person go through the severe punishment of committing, committing adultery. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has balanced everything in the Sharia. In the second ayah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talked about the punishment for those who would commit adultery. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the third ayah is mentioning a rule about such people who get used to this, these things, people who get involved with these type of things, that azani la yankihu illa zaniyatan aw mushrika. The fornicator shall not marry anyone but a fornicatress or a mushrik woman. Which means Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us that when a person starts getting into these type of sins, then these people do not befit good people. They don't even like the good people. A person who gets into the habit of committing adultery will ayazbillah when he's looking for a wife, he would like a wife who would support him in these type of things. He knows that even after marriage, he will not give up these habits. And he would like to continue, and therefore he would like a type of wife that would approve his action. 
that would allow him to continue doing whatever he had been doing. And of course, a normal woman would not approve this. A woman that would approve anything like this would be only a type of woman who herself is involved in these type of things. And same thing from the other side. A woman who is used to living that type of life, when she thinks of a marriage, she would want to marry a person who would approve any of these actions from her side, and therefore she would not look for a person who is not involved in these type of things. A person who is used to going to the clubs would like to, when he is looking or she is looking for a partner, they would like to have a partner that is used to going to the club and would allow them to go there. And if the other partner before marriage would tell the person, no, I won't allow you to go to the club. No, I can't live without it. That's part of my life. This is where I socialize with everyone. This is where my friends go to. And I need to go with my friends. I need to hang out with my friends. I won't give up all of those friends just because of marrying you. So, they cannot give up these type of things. And therefore, they lean towards the type of people that are very similar to them in these actions. In simple words, by committing these types of sins, the person's nature's nature starts getting ruined. We are ruining the nature by getting into these type of things. And gradually the person's nature starts liking evil. And therefore this person when he or she is looking for a partner for life, they would like to have a partner that would be involved in these type of things. Who would like those people except for those who are involved in it? Otherwise, normally at the time of marriage, a normal person would think that I would like to just live a good life where I don't want to get into sins. I don't want to cheat on my wife. I don't want to be committing these sins. I need the protection for my soul. And I will provide protection for my family. This is what a normal person would think. But a person who has ruined his own nature by committing these sins is looking for those type of people. <laughs> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala therefore is telling us a zani la yantihu illa zaniya. A person, a man, who is involved in adultery. He normally, he does not marry except a woman who is involved in the same type of action. Aw mushrika. Or this person will look for a mushrika. Because she will approve all of these things. She has no iman. <coughs> the thing that will prevent the person from committing these sins is iman. Is believe in Allah, is believe in the hereafter. When that iman is not there, when that belief in the hereafter is not there, what will prevent the person from falling into these type of sins? So, when a person does not fear the punishment from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then the doors of all evils are open. And there is no reason why this person would not fulfill his or her desire in a wrongful way if that person has no fear of getting caught by someone or no fear of the law of the country. Whatever he is doing may be within the law of the country. Although God says it is not allowed. But the law of the country allows it, so there is nothing that would prevent this person if the fear of God is not there. If the fear of Allah is not there. What will stop? Why should this person stop? Simple example. 
when people are filing for bankruptcy, there is a person, and of course we know there are people who misuse the system. So there are people who would design their whole business from the beginning till the end on this basis that at the end he is going to file a bankruptcy. So this is how he is going to do the whole business. He sets the whole business up in such a way that he's going to have a huge store where he's going to take big loans from the bank. It will be millions of dollars. Get all the merchandise. Take loans for that. Get the merchandise. Get the loan. Merchandise sets disappearing. Accounts. There is mixed up in the accounts everywhere. And after a couple of years, he goes bankrupt. Normally, the word bankrupt would simply mean the person is in real difficult situation. But in many of the cases, we see that the person who is applying for the bankruptcy, he is the winner. He is very happy about the bankruptcy. Because he designed the whole thing in that way. Of course, Within the law, he he did everything to stay within the law. He consulted lawyers and everything, and there is nothing that is against the law over there. All the people who gave him that loan, they won't get nothing out of it. Property will be auctioned and will be auctioned for pennies. And if there is anything that comes out of it, that the auctioneer will not take and there is one going taxes and other things, then the people who gave him these loans and merchandise, they will get their pennies back out of millions that they have given. So what would prevent this person from doing something like this is fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That he knows that it's something that I owe it to people. And if I keep the system, if I keep the people, Allah is watching. So therefore Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, الزاني لا ينكح إلا زانية أو مشركة. A person who is involved in these type of sins, in adultery, normally when he thinks about marriage, he would think of one of the two type of women. Either a woman who is involved in the same type of actions, he met a woman, he goes to the club every day, and he met a woman over there, and he marries that woman. He saw a dancer over there, he saw another woman over there, but he just goes behind those type of women. So when we see that our heart is leaning towards that direction, simply means the nature is getting spoiled. But you know that this person is not pure, and does not even plan to live a pure life. And now when the person is leaning to that person and wants that person to be the partner for life, wants that woman to be the mother of his children, that woman wants this man to be the father of her children, simply means something is wrong. And therefore it's very important that we refrain from these type of sins so that we don't corrupt our nature. We don't spoil our nature. During the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, there were incidents when because of some need of the time, Sahaba Radwanullah alayhi wa sallam asked Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam for permission to marry a woman who was involved in that type of sin. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam recited this ayah to them, stopping them from marrying those type of women. Which tells us that when a person is looking to get married, we should always try to protect, number one, protect our souls from these type of sins, and number one, look for a person who would like to stay away from committing these type of sins and cheating on the other partner. And the only way that this could happen is not only by making sure that our woman would not commit these sins, it's by making sure that we ourselves do not commit these sins. 
Because by us getting involved in these type of sins, we are spoiling the society. Simply means there are women in the society that are involved in these type of sins. So the society is corrupted. There is corruption in the society. And for those men who are involved in these type of things, they would want those type of women to exist in that society for them to be able to commit these sins and fulfill their desires in a wrongful way. So now, no ma- those men who are involved in these type of things, they don't want any correction in that type of situation. They don't want to get rid of these things from the society because then where they themselves are going to go. So they want something like this. This is how societies and finally the families get spoiled and everyone now, after some time, even when people are getting married, even after, at the time of marriage, they, when they're looking for their partner for lifetime and for the mother and the father for their children, they are not looking for clean people. They are looking for people that are involved in similar type of sins. Of course, the application of the ayah is only for those who do not repent and they want to continue with this type of life after marriage. If they do the tawbah, they repent, they seek Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's forgiveness, either of the two was involved in the past, and now they changed. Of course, the ayah does not apply to those people. And there are clear indications in the hadith where there were people who in the days of Jahiliyyah, they were involved in these type of sins when they came into the scene of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and they repented, they promised to change their life. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam considered them like any other pure person who had never committed such a so we should not hold anything against those who may have committed a sin by mistake or those who were involved in it and later on they realized either before Islam or even after Islam they were involved in these type of sins later on some time in their life they realized that it was not right for them to be in that situation and they would like to change their lifestyle now is not good for any save there was a woman of the tribe and it's not good for any man to set looking down at her or try to uh, accuse her of these things because of what she was involved in before this time. Now she did so, but she did istighfar and is not allowed for any person to run after them and to remind them or to announce about their sins that don't do this, don't marry her because she was involved in these type of things. No, how is she going to change? How is he going to change if the society will not accept those type of people? So it's not for those who are changing and who are uh, who are uh, doing the safar and giving up that type of lifestyle, this is for those who would like to continue with this type of lifestyle. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, وَحُرِّمَ ذَلِكَ عَلَى الْمُؤْمِنِينَ And this thing is totally forbidden for the believers. It's not allowed for believers that they should be looking to marry a mushrika or they should be looking forward to marry a woman who's involved in adultery. Same thing is not allowed for a mu'min woman to be looking for a man who is involved in these type of sins because she wants her freedom in the future is not allowed. This is haram. If a person would marry a person with this intention that this person will allow me to continue the sin, it will be haram for this person to marry uh, the other person in this situation. وَالَّذِينَ يَرْمُونَ الْمَحْصَنَاتِ ثُمَّ لَمْ يَأْتُوا بِأَرْبَعَةِ شُهَدَاءَ فَيْبِدُوهُمْ ثَمَانِينَ جَلْدَةِ Those who accuse a chaste woman, and do not produce four witnesses, shall be flogged with eighty lashes, and never accept their testimony ever again, and they are the sinners. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as he talked about, the punishment for those who would commit adultery. And he told us how bad of a sin this is, how nature, society, families get corrupted by this type of sin. Now he's protecting everyone in the society from getting falsely accused of committing the sin. And this is called qadaf in sharia. When a person would falsely accuse someone of committing zina, when billah. 
This is something very important, especially these days. Nowadays, it's something very important for us to know the rules about Qadr. Because we are very loose with the use of our tongue. And many times, we get involved in such a talk that if it was Islamic country and Islamic rules and laws will apply, this person would be punished according to the Sharia, and not only punished, for the rest of his life, this person's name will be written in the list of those who are considered the bad element of the society. Their witness should, should never be accepted if this person would go that uh, would witness for moon sighting. Oh, I have seen the moon. No. Even if you've seen it in reality, even if you have seen it, we can't accept your witness. I have seen this accident taking place in this situation. He goes in the court. I was standing there. The court will say, you? No. Not you. If someone else has seen it, bring those witnesses. But no. He goes and witnesses that I was in the masjid when this marriage took place, this nikah took place. They will look at him, no. Your witness cannot be accepted. So, there are certain sins where a person will get into the category and the list of those whose witness will not be accepted. And this is one of those, Qadaf. Qadaf, as I said, it means falsely accusing someone of committing adultery. Whether you accuse a man or a woman, falsely accusing someone of committing adultery. This is called Qadaf in Islam. According to the rules of the Sharia, if a person witnesses for zina against someone, you need four witnesses, at least four witnesses. If you do not have four witnesses to prove that this person had committed adultery, then that would not be accepted in the Islamic court. Not only that it will not be accepted, if you would go and witness that you have seen such and such person committing adultery, from the Sharia point of view, the court will demand that bring three more witnesses that have seen the same thing. If you cannot produce those witnesses, then the court ruling would be that you should be going through the punishment of 80 lashes for falsely accusing the person. So this person will be lashed 80 lashes because he has falsely accused but those people, even though he may have seen, but Sharia says you cannot come up and speak about it and witness for it except if you have three more witnesses. Not only this, this person didn't go to the court. He was telling people that such and such person had committed adultery. This person had committed adultery. Or, just like there are some curse words that mean the child from a wedlock. Curse words, that will, I don't want to use those words, but I'm sure we know that there are curse words that will refer to these type of things. If a person would use these type of curse words, and the person for whom you use these type of words, he goes and complains in the court, from the Sharia point of view, he complains in the court that you use this type of word for him, the court will call you and will ask you to bring four witnesses for this. And if you cannot produce the four witnesses, then that punishment will apply on you, of 80 lashes. And now, when we say four witnesses, we don't need four witnesses that would say <laughs> that, yes, I have read the email. Or, I have heard their conversation. Or, I was standing at the door when they were inside. Any of these things will not be acceptable for this type of accusation. It has to be something that has been clearly witnessed. A lot of time, 
we just get to this final conclusion that they must have done it because I saw them doing this and this, or I have saw them talking about this, or I saw them going together. In fact, just to understand the rule of the Sharia, to understand the rule of the Sharia, and have it very clearly set in our mind, because the reason is, a lot of time we ourselves get involved in these type of things. Say, for example, if a person would go to a court, and he would witness that I have seen both of them in the bath. The question would be, was a blanket on top of them? Yes. Then you don't know it. 80 lashes for you. Because they were covered. And your witness is not for them that they were committing just a normal sin. Your witness about them is that they have committed zina. Have you seen that action or you have seen anything else? This is how careful the Sharia is about this. But of course then, the objection gets, gets, gets raised about from the other side, and that is, in this situation, aren't we giving these criminals too much protection? That a person who is committing these sins, just as some of them, some people have objected, that you are just telling them that go and hide somewhere and come it, no one would be able to witness against you. But the point that we need to understand, here we are talking about witnessing for committing zina, for committing adultery. If you have not seen the action, or you don't have enough witnesses, why would you have to go and witness for them committing adultery? You can just go and witness that I have seen them together. And that is punishable by Sharia, but not that punishment of zina of adultery. A lot of time people raise objections against Sharia that, you know, this punishment of zina, of adultery is very strict and very harsh when I ask Billah. Then there are the same people who would object that why are you having so many conditions and restrictions about the witnesses that they have seen, they must have seen this and they must be 